A quick note on today's video, I was unaware on how bad the wind noise was, so I will make sure to put subtitles as needed throughout the video so you can better understand me. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today, I'm back out here with a couple of jugs to hopefully catch a few catfish, but before that, I gotta catch the bait. There's the first fish of the day, first piece of uh, catfish bait we'll have. <laughs> That's really all I need. I want some smaller bluegills such as this one right here, and the perfect size to cut in half, throw in a jug line, and use for bait, obviously. So. That's kind of what I'm looking for. I might have to change my hook out from the circle hook I have been using lately to a J hook that's a little bit smaller. There we go, first piece of bait. Now I need about six or seven more of these and I can start putting jugs out. I believe most people that fish for catfish can probably agree to this, but the reason I catch my bait the day of fishing, most of the time, especially when I am able to like today, is because a general rule of thumb for catfish is the fresher your bait, the more likely you're going to catch fish. Now, don't get me wrong, if you have some really, really good uh, stink baits, for example, old crawfish, as long as they're not too soft and can stay on a hook, they will work. But when it comes to fish specifically, whether you're using brim or crappie, skipjack, anything of that nature for bait, generally the fresher it is, the better it's gonna stay on a hook and the better chance you're gonna have to catch catfish. Finally, have another fish. It's been probably 30 minutes or so. Yet another bluegill. Get away from the spot real quick. This wind's pushed me into the bank. There we go. Third bluegill in the ice chest. It has been a grind out here just to catch some bait. I imagine that's due to the mayflies being out. They've been out for hmm, four or so days now. So when they initially start, it's great fishing. They're all feeding aggressively, but by that fourth or fifth day, they seem to slow down a lot, and the bite seems to slow down for these bluegill, and I think I may have caught just the end of it is what's happened. But regardless, I just need three more, and then I can set these jugs out. Today is quite a windy day, five to 10 mile per hour with 15 mile per hour gusts. So the setup I have is an Akuma CMAR C10 reel, ultralight reel, with a Akuma Cielo two-piece, five-foot long rod. Now this rod has a very, very thin tip, which obviously helps with strike indication, but also gives you a little extra swing whenever you make casts. Now, instead of using four-pound test, I've moved to two-pound test. Two-pound test allows me to cast further, and as the wind grabs it and starts pushing it along, you'll notice four-pound test, it's just flowing your bobber away with the line, but with two pound, it allows your bobber to stay in the strike zone a little bit longer, which certainly does help, obviously. Now, I have a slip bobber set up, and the reason for that is I'm using a balsa wood cork. And the reason I use balsa wood is that, obviously, it's a little bit heavier than styrofoam, and it allows me to use two pieces of lead of weight instead of what I would normally use, which is the smallest piece of lead of weight I can. The reason for this is that I have more weight on the front end, which is obviously going to give me more casting distance, but it's still very, very thin to where a fish is not going to feel it go underneath the water. Now, in terms of hook, I was originally using a size 2 circle hook, but the fish back here are relatively small generally, so I have a size 2 wire hook on. I'm only catching these bluegill for bait. I'm not really after large bluegill. I'm just after any bluegill. So that's why I switched to the size 10 hook. There we go. Finally, fish number five. One more, and that'll be enough to set out some lines finally. It's kind of weird. Usually, I would have well, I would have expected them to be a little bit farther away from the bank, but they seem to be right on top of it. I mean, you have to cast basically directly on the bank in order to catch these fish today. Kind of interesting. Finally, number six. Now we can finally get to catfishing. Took long enough. Jeez. I'm gonna go ahead 
and get to the part y'all actually want to see, and that's getting these jugs out. Once we do that, I'll go back to brim fishing to catch a little bit more bait in case we need to rebait these jugs, but let's go ahead and get to the fun part. So I decided to come all the way into the back of the creek to where you can't go back any further because there's less wind back here. There's a lot more coverage with trees and whatnot. So it kind of blocks it and will keep these jugs in the general area versus out there where the wind starts kicking up. It's just gonna blow those jugs all over the place. So I cut my bluegill in half using some mustad scissors. I'll show you all those in a second. But there's my half piece of bluegill. Now I have both five aught and eight aught hooks. Uh, the only reason I have the five odd hooks is really just because they're already on here, so I might as well use them. But I'm just hooking them right through the top, and as you can see, they're not yanking off pretty easily. I might even do that just a little bit farther down, but not too far, because I want plenty of this hook exposed. I just want that bait in the bait holder and this tip right here to be clear of any scales and able to go into a fish's mouth. So now that I have that set, I have my homemade jugs here. I want to set it down into the water, make sure the lead is all the way to the front, and lay it flat. Now, when a fish comes up to grab that, it'll pull down and that lead will go to the bottom of the jug, which is going to make it stand up, which will scare the fish and hopefully get that circle hook to go to the side of the mouth, and obviously indicate that there's a fish on. I set these jugs about 50 to 100 yards apart, but on this jug, I have an 8 odd circle hook, and what you see is a piece of lead right there. Now, the reason I'm interested in this piece of lead right here is I don't need a whole lot of weight to sink these baits. Most of these that just have a hook, I have to go buy an additional piece of lead, put it on, like you see on this one, and that's just something extra you have to do. It's a little extra time consuming, so if these 8 odd hooks work with the lead already on them and this doesn't get in the way, this might be a really good hook for jugs and limb lines. We're just gonna have to wait and see. Nevertheless, just like that last jug, here's my piece of bait. And this is a head piece. I wanna go through the top, make sure there's plenty of room on that gap to where a fish's mouth can get to it, clean off any scales to make sure that barb can get into them. And now, throw it in the water. Make sure my lead's on the right side and drop it. And just keep on going down the river. Now these must add bait scissors. Personally, I didn't find them. Honestly, I found them on YouTube through another guy, Kayak Catfish, and he uses these quite a bit. And I figured I'd give them a try. And I gotta say, they work quite well, especially compared to a sharp knife on a cutting board. These cold bluegill are a little bit tricky to cut through, so these may be your best option, especially if you do a good bit of jugging. So the way I cut these, I go right across the back and I cut all these spines off. And I'm just gonna go over the side. So as you can see, the top's cut off. And then these small bluegills, I'm just gonna cut right up the middle. Nice and easy. And there's two pieces of bait, pretty easy and quickly cut up. I did that a lot quicker than I normally would with a cutting board and a knife, I must say. Well, there's not much more to it than that. I'm just gonna continue going down this line, setting out all my jugs, and then I'm gonna look for a few new areas to catch the bluegill while these soak for the next couple of hours. something on this one actually although I don't think it's a catfish I would expect a more thrashing nope a very very large grenel these things are kind of nasty I prefer not to deal with them when I don't have to I'll get y'all pretty good look here for a second 
So that is what a Grenel looks like. Not a very pretty fish, doesn't taste very good, and uh, not the target species, but you know what? We didn't get skunked on the line, so that's a benefit. Last time I tried to make a video a couple weeks ago, I tried to do a jug fishing video, and th this is all I caught. That's how it goes sometimes. They have some pretty mean teeth, and they can be pretty aggressive, so I like to try to keep my hand away from them if I can. There we go. Off he goes. Now this jug right here, I thought it was farther down than what it is. So the, something may have gotten it and to just drug it into this tree. That is something that certainly happens a lot. Usually you don't find them in open water. You'll find them hung out in trees because they're trying to get back into shade. Oh, I don't think that's the case here. At least I don't feel anything. <laughs> no, I lied. There is something on this one, finally. Let me get out of this brush real quick. And it's exactly what I was looking for. A nice, good-sized blue catfish. I'm not worried about him coming unhooked. That circle hook's got him in the corner of the mouth. Let's take a look at him. <laughs> That's what we were looking for. I'm gonna grab a pair of fish grips right here. It makes it a little bit easier to hold him up. <laughs> That's the catfish we were looking for. That's a good, uh, let's see how much he weighs. Eight pounds or so. Looks like an eight pound catfish. A little skinny, but not bad. I was hoping they'd be back here. That's where I found it before. Sure enough, this one is a little bit bigger than normal eating size, but I'm going to skin them up anyway. I have a few people want some catfish, but exciting stuff. Finally got the first catfish of the day. There it is right there. It's nearly going underwater. There's something decent on it. Try to ease up on it. Probably need to get my gaff ready for this one to grab it. It's got to be decently strong to pull that bob or the uh, jug underneath. Unfortunately, my audio equipment decided to die at this point, but I managed to get this catfish in the boat. He was on one of the smaller orange jugs and a 5 aught hook, and this is really the size I'm trying to find if I plan on taking them home. This is a good four to five pound blue catfish, perfect skinning and eating size. And as you can see, that other one is missing. He was a good sport, so I let him go. And this one was a little bit better for the table. It's been a while since I've had fresh catfish, about two years. So I'm really looking forward to cooking this guy up and hopefully doing something like a catch and cook later on. Overall, I ended up with six or seven bluegill, that one grenel and two blue catfish. I definitely had to work for it today, about 10 or 11 hours out on the water. I'm about to pack everything up and head back in. But guys, I do hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please make sure to share, like, subscribe for more. And as always, thanks for watching.